Hi, welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. Hope you're good. It's been a little while, hasn't it? It was just after Aintree last time I saw you. Uh, today, then, well, we'll have a brief little chat about what's happened in the meantime. But mainly, we're just going to be looking at the Punchestown racing this week. Um, obviously, not got the final entries for a lot of the races. So, a little like that Aintree preview video I'll be quite selective in the races and I'll just give my thoughts really uh, for what it's worth on, on some of the races there so um, kick off I've, I've only just found out we've lost Shishkin haven't we which is uh, that's not nice is it that's uh, yeah they, they kind of become your friends these horses don't you the, the, you know and uh, it's a shame when you lose them and um, yeah just a freak accident it seems so that's, that's really bad for connections that like you've got to feel for connections and wow well, I mean they were a bit of a maverick weren't they Shishkin um, I thought I thought he had a fair chance this week as well um, yeah we've you know had some good days with Shishkin um, yeah, yeah, that's sad. He's had a horrible season, aren't he, Nicky? He really has. I mean, you know, constitution ill. He's only got him out once. Then, you know, what happened at Charlton, that were just one of them freak things I've never known out like that before, you know. And and then, then to lose one of his uh, sort of stable stars there in Shishkin. Well, it's, it's been a year to forget for Nicky, hasn't it, you know. shows you don't it? you never know what's coming it's been, been a year to remember for willie though hasn't it uh jesus yeah he's carried all before him hasn't he, this season after he won the national it looked on the cards you know he were well odds on after that and he made sure really sealed that didn't he um the air there four winners on scottish national day he took out the scottish national with mcdermott wow Looking back at that meeting, and the real sort of child the most I'd take out of that would be Kay de Bourbon. We saw him there, didn't we? He had a jog round and won well. We might be seeing him again this week. Uh, we've had a little bit on him, haven't we, for the uh, Browns there. So, yeah, he looks nice to us. And McDermott, you know, he can't go up too much for this. Maybe he's got another big pot in him as well. Uh, we'll see. I don't think maybe like that class for a modern day national, but there's other races there, and maybe he could pick up some. Mm -hmm. It's only six, isn't he? So he could improve a bit, yeah. And then Sandown, well. I mean, Scottish National Willie. What what got me? He didn't he? Didn't just win it, did he? He got the first, fourth, fifth, and sixth. That's some going that. And you look at the prices returned on, you know, eighteen to one winner. I think they were like fifties and sixty sixes. The sort of fourth and fifth. Uh, he's just flying, isn't he? he is. It's it's ominous for this bunch of style meeting. It is. Um. Sandown, main takeaway from that, I guess. I mean, he got the first and third in the 365 Gold Cup, didn't he? We'll come back to that in a sec. And um, but the main takeaway, really well, Fabiolo, weren't he? He underperformed again, let down by his jumping a little. And we'll have to see if Willie gets him back next year. The first thing I did after that race, just checked the price of Gaelic Warrior there for the champion chase. The uh, best I could get was 7-2. to two. So I've, I've let that go. I just, you know. But he, he, he looks the one at the moment, doesn't he, for that race. And he could cement his claims there this week. He probably will, won't he? Yeah. 
yeah, 365 Gold Cup. Oh. Apologies if you followed me in on Desert Moor House there. Apologies. Um, well, I had him for a good amount. I uh, had a decent anti post bet on him, but I had him doubled up with McDermott in the Scottish National. So, like, I think behind Hulk and Tabbert, that would be my sort of biggest drag of the season anti post. So, yeah, if you follow me in there, apologies. And believe me, I feel your pain. I do. <laughs> I do. I think he'd had a cracking chance, but we'll see. Maybe time will tell. That maybe I overestimated his chances. I don't know. But he'd have been off a fly weight in that. So, yeah, I've got no notes today. So, we're just going to wing it. So, if I say something and you think, well, that's interesting, didn't know that, just check first that I ain't got it wrong. Because uh, all I'm, I've got my phone here and we're just going to go through the racing post, race to race. And uh, we'll check the odds on odds checker there. So, the first race then tomorrow, we have got final decks, haven't we, for tomorrow. I've had a few bets through the week, just a little like Ainsley, just small sort of value bets, more than anything. But, um, first race we're interested in tomorrow then is the 340, which is the two mile grade one champion novice hurdle. There's no Ballyburn here. This is basically a rerun of the Supreme. We've got the first four from the Supreme in this. And the horse I backed, the horse I like and the horse I backed is Mystical Power. Um, you know, the ground at the moment, it's giving it as yielding. There's some rain forecast, but it's not going to get to like heavy, I don't think. So, you know, we don't know for sure but I'm working on the assumption it's going to be roundabout sort of yielding no worse than soft anyway might be some good in it so I think the ground's going to be pretty decent and we'll work on that assumption so working on that assumption yeah you've got the first four from the Supreme and they've dropped in Il Atlantic to two mile with Danny Mullins Um yeah, I just think this race should set up better than the Supreme or, or the Aintree race, really, for Mystical Power, you know. As we mentioned before, we've been waiting for him to get some better ground so he can use that turn of foot to best effect, and I think he's going to get that opportunity here. So, you know, as good horse as Slade Steel is, and he is, he's a good, tough horse, you know. You've got to respect him. But he's, you know, check the prices. I think he was around about sort of five to four, six to four. Yeah, 13 to eight best. Mystical power is 11 to four at the moment. I, I've took 11 to four. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. I think that's a fair price. Obviously, he's been to Aintree, and he's been to Cheltenham, Aintree, and now he's coming on to Punchestown. So you have that little worry in your mind, you know. But if he, if he turns up in the form that he turned up in the Supreme under Aintree, I, I think, yeah, I think he'll take this. This should set up nicely for him to use that turn of foot. Uh, yeah, respect Slade Steel. Firefox probably... You're probably looking at the third place there for Firefox. And if there's a fly in the ointment anywhere here, I think it is a Atlantic. He drops to two mile for the first time since his hurdles debut this season. Long overdue. Uh, if the ground were like heavy, I'd give him a good chance. As it is, I mean, we've got Asian Master in there as well. His form last season, a Atlantic, he's puts him close to Firefox so you know 
I think he's probably going to be fourth or fifth there, but he could run a big race and sort of maybe break into the top three. Um, with Danny Mullins up, yeah. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him going over fences next year. I think that's when we'll see him at his best. But he should run, yeah. This two mile trip should suit him better than the two and a half he's been running. I can see him running a big race, but yeah. I'm quite like mystical power for this. So then, so you'll have to bear with me because I'm just going to flick through race to race on my phone here. The 415 is the next race, two mile listed handicap hurdle. Bialystok goes here for Willie. I want him at air. Don't know how he got beat there. He went past the winner for me. I mean, in the you know, the results analysis said he was lucky. I don't think he was lucky. I know he didn't get a clear run, but he went past the winner. And I, I couldn't believe he got beat from there. He's off my uh, he's off my horses to follow list now. And it looks like he's off Paul's horses to follow list as well because he, he abandons him here. And he rides Daddy Long Legs now. Uh, to have a Willie Will account, um, yeah, they opened him up seven to one yesterday. Then he went fives. Then he went fours. No one else has priced him up yet. He'd be the selection here, Daddy Long Legs off one three five. You know, <laughs> is he a bet at four to one? No, maybe not. Maybe not, but he's the selection anyway. Fiercely competitive race. I haven't gone through it in loads of depth. What I tend to do with Punches Town, I mean, Willie dominates, doesn't he? And, you know, he's going to hit somewhere between 15 and 20 winners more than likely. I think more often than not, he does. So you're looking at three or four winners on average a day. So if I have a strong opinion in a race, I'll back that opinion. If I haven't got a strong opinion and I'm sort of between three or four and one or two of them happen to be Willie's horses, then I'll side with Willie's horses and that's how I sort of play it, you know. So, the handicaps generally get shared out between the jockeys a little at Punches Town, but maybe not so much this week because Paul's, I think, seven behind. Jack, that's going to be close. That's almost guaranteed to go down to the last day, I'd say. That should be quite an exciting battle between those two. I expect Paul will pick up the odd handicap as well this week. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, you know, he only ran six days ago, didn't he? And his other one of interest is Rathcore Boy. And he ran just eight days ago. But they're, they're the two that I'd like. Um, it just depends on the prices, if they're bets or not. Yeah, Daddy Long Legs and Rathcore Boy I'd take against the field in that. Yeah, um, Daddy Long Legs I should appreciate the ground. Um, then we have a bumper. Not really looked into that. Sometimes it's just Pat Willie in the bumper, isn't it? But even a lot of these races I've not looked into much at all. So then the next race, 5.25, yeah, this is a good race, a grade one race. This is the um, grade one champion chase. Good race, this. I like Dino Blue here. Dino Blue's a selection, and I've had the bet. Uh, it's plenty of two to one about. Oh, there's quite a bit of two to one, I think. I'll just check for you.
Yep. Pink at two to one. Yeah, two to one generally. Yeah, so you may get a little bit bigger on the exchanges as well for this. Uh, I've had a decent bet on Dino Blue. I think she's the best bet tomorrow and maybe the best bet of the meeting. Uh, she just outstayed there. And she, she didn't get the two, two and a half on heavy at Cheltenham. Back down to two mile. I mean, a form at two miles since last year. She just took off, hasn't she? Uh, she's second to El Fabio Lowe. She had some of these in behind her that day. I just... At the weights, she comes out, I think, the best horse, just narrowly. I think she's got like a pound in hand, a Captain Guinness. Captain Guinness, yeah, you'd respect him. Gentleman to me, respect him. But struggling with the others, I think. The thing is, at this meeting, I mean, Dino Blue as well, last year, don't forget, she came out from Charlton, had a hard race there. And then she backed it up at Fairy House. And then she went in again, didn't she, I think, at this meeting. So she finished last season. She can, you know, she trains on into the spring. She's proven that. So she should win a race here. And that counts for a lot this time of year. If you've got an horse, you're pretty confident he's going to run its race. Henry, as good as Henry is with Cheltenham, and he, you know, he really does peak his horses. As, as good or better than anybody for Cheltenham but they don't always carry that form over to these festivals sometimes they do, sometimes they don't Dino Blue I think personally if Dino Blue ran in that champion chase at Cheltenham I think she'd have won it um, I think 2-1 to one's more than fair, I do I'd put her in around 11-8 to eight, and I suspect that's the sort of price she'll finish up at um, yeah, yeah, confident selection, Dino Blue. Um, so, so she's the bet for tomorrow. I've had my biggest bet anyway outside Cheltenham all season on that horse, so I put my money where my mouth is there. The six o'clock race is a good race, isn't it? Yeah. Three mile one, champion novice chase. This is a cracking race. It is horses at the front of the market. I love these horses. You know I do. Um, Monty Star and Spillane's Tower. Um, yeah, I mean we had a small bit, didn't we, on Spillane's Tower at forties for the Gold Cup next year. You know, Monty Star. He's he's like a Gold Cup contender too. Willie runs Embassy Gardens here. He had that fibrillating heart, didn't he? Maybe he just doesn't like Charlton though. And maybe you could put a line through that and you've got to respect Willie at this meeting. If you put a line through that last run. But. The one I backed here, I backed this one anti-post. And it's... You know, well, I took 14s anti post, and you can get 12s now anyway, so didn't, didn't get much on that. Is Sandor Clegan. If you remember, I said at Charlton, we said, didn't we, that was much his best run of the season. Paul Nolan's in good form, I think he had a double last week, and yeah, last year he ran. A blinder at Cheltenham, and he backed that up at Punchestown. Again, he he ran a, you know, he won well at Punchestown. He'd look good that day. He's going to get his ground here. It's his time of year. I just think he's going to run a massive race. Granted, you know, if any of those sort of front two, possibly three in the market, run to the very best. They're better horses, aren't they? Sandor Clagan's not going to be winning a Gold Cup, you know. But you do get some funny results this year, and like this time of year at this meeting, 
and if the, those front two sort of underperform, which is quite possible, especially when we're talking like novices, younger horses, sometimes they've just done enough for the year. You don't know until they run. You know, I'm, I'm confident Sandor Clagan's going to run his race. He's going to run a big race here, I think. To, to win, he'll probably need the front well they certainly need the front two in the market to underperform a little but that's quite possible I just thought it was a bit of value so yeah Sandor Clagan each way at sort of 12 to 1 and then there's just that's pretty much it for tomorrow really um, I'll just give this also mention <laughs> It just caught me eye. Um, probably a daft thing, this. Okay, so. There's a horse here called Sutherland, which is running for a trainer I'd never heard of before. Jamie Albert Sloan. Now, he's only had three runners before. But this is... Ronnie Bartlett horse so I'm just intrigued how he's got such a big owner already I don't know anything about him some of you guys might know more than me which won't be hard because I know nothing about this guy but I'm intrigued as to how he's got a horse for such a big owner and you know you, you have these mad thoughts don't you and you're thinking well maybe if the kind of pally he sent him a good horse here at a big meeting just to kind of put him on the map I don't know. The horse has got no previous, no point to point or bumper form. But I just thought he was intriguing. And you know, if he's put in, I'd imagine he could be putting at a big old price. If he's putting like 50s or something like that, 50s, 66s, I'll, I'll just have a fiver each way or something on him, just a, a, a little bit of change each way. Um, if he's putting at a big, big price which he, you'd imagine it would be. Um, you know, same owner had that good winner at air in the bumper, didn't he, for Gordon. So that's uh, that's tomorrow then. Right, we'll go on to Wednesday. We may have the decks through now for Wednesday. I've not seen these yet, if we have. So we really are just making it up as we go along today. Um, some lights sort of right okay just the 25 runner handicap head will go on we'll, we'll click on that to open the card see if anything jumps out um, the other mozzie ran well the last day I think Yeah, so this is probably the like least professional. We've never been good on production values, have we? But um, we might be sinking to new lows today with this. So apologies for that. I'll do my best. I've just not had time to go through it all and make the notes and stuff. Right, OK, we're here. We have horses and jockeys. Now the other mozzie is there. This looks you know I, I've not looked into the form of these oh Parker Kings is there we had a little play with him didn't we walk away Harry <laughs> sneaks in at the bottom for Charles Burns won a bumper here last year didn't he tongue tied first time what trips this two and a half Hmm. Yeah. Park Kings catches the eye a little. He didn't quite get home over the three, did we? Did he? But you know, he ran a hell of a race. Just didn't quite get home. This'll be his trip and his ground. So I'd say Parker Kings is one to take note of. I'd have a look at the other Mozzie. He just 
I think he ran a decent race last time. And walk away, Harry, at the bottom. He just looks... 113. He, he won a bumper at this meeting well, didn't he, last year? The bookies won't be taking any chances, I guess. Um... William Hill will probably put him in at 16s a bit time everyone else prices him up he'll be 7 to 2 like you know but yeah he, he very much catches the eye there walk away Harry we'll make him a tentative selection there let's have a look at the other two as well right the next race then right oh yeah this is the EBF auction hurdle and yeah answer to cave qualifies for this race uh, you know ran a big race there fourth in the Martin Pipe we said didn't we that should work out well he'd be the one to beat off a marker 138 Willie's got Blizzard of Oz here and yeah yeah it looks between those two I'd say that race Um yeah, answers K has to give Blizzard of Oz four pound. So Blizzard of Oz is effectively running off one three four here. I'd be I'd, I'd be tempted to go with answer to K there. I think, I'd, but there's they'd be the two horses I'd be looking at. I'd imagine they'll be towards the front of the market there. Probably not telling you anything you don't know. I don't have prices, I don't think, for a lot of these races. Let's just check. Let's see if anyone's put 16s up for walk away, Harry. No, no we, we haven't got any prices yet for these. Okay. Right, the next race then. Two mile, three and a half, Louis Fitzgerald Hotel Hurdle. I uh, did have a flick through these and if he's running here oh well some decent horses in this Claytus Pulo no gorgeous Tom there was some confidence in him last time weren't there? he won well Tall Forest is there Mr Giff he brings grade one form to this. Paul's on him. No flies on him. He's been disappointing, hasn't he? Um, Sempo, wow. He's still around. Bo walking. On ratings, this is a good opportunity it, for Mr. Giff. I, I'm not going to sort of put you away with stuff. Do you know, if I'm not too sure, I don't want to be saying, oh, you know, I might back this or that and, and then just totally change my mind. Mr. Giff would set the standard there, wouldn't he? Not sure. He might want softer ground, though. But, um, yeah, I've got no strong opinion on that race just at the moment. Right, yeah, this one I have there. The three mile grade one novice hurdle. What's in here then? Just got to refresh that. Yeah, I've actually had an anti post bet in this race, so hopefully he's here. Okay, the horse of back time to post for this is better days ahead, and he is here. Um, yeah, again, that Martin Pipe form. It did actually cross my mind, you know, because I think all four were down, so I entered the first four from 
the Martin Park went to this week and they were all in kind of different races as well. Three of the four were anyway. Um, yeah, so you've got answer to cater in that EBF auction race. You've got better days in this. And then... Waterford Whispers, he was entered for the two and a half mile handicap hurdle. Uh, we've got Cade Bourbon, I weren't sure if he were going to run in this or not. Uh, he's also entered for an handicap. But maybe, do you know, with a sort of late start times and stuff, if we could somehow get all those three into one bet, that sort of relatable bet, isn't it? That could be a nice little tricksy or something. But yeah, back to this race then. The horse about Andy Post were better days ahead. Um, before final decks, he were 5 to 1. And he got a shade better than that. Uh, and he'd be the selection here. I will keen. If you remember at the time, we said, didn't we? Looked at the Albert Bartlett, looked at the Martin Pipe. I thought for this race at Punchestown, I wanted to be with the Martin Pipe horses. And the Martin Pipe horse is the winner. Better days ahead. So yeah, we had a little bit on him for the Browns as well, at me, Auntie Post. At Stella Story, I would be against Stella Story backing up here. I just don't think he's the sort of horse, you know, that's going to string together a load at once, you know. But you'd respect him, like, you know, he's there with his chance, isn't he? And Dancing City, obviously, he sets the standard now. He sort of turned that Albert F Bartlett form round into here, Aintree. You know, comes again here. He did have a tough sort of race at Aintree, but Willie's just brilliant. He's... He seems on another level, doesn't he, do you know, with these festivals. He seems to get his horses fit and, and they seem to maintain that form. Generally, generally anyway, you know, not every time, but more than most trainers. I don't know how he does it, but he does seem to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I like Better Days Eddie. I thought I'd go with the Martin Pipe form. He That, that looked a red hot Martin Pipe to me. He steps up to three mile here, which will suit him. And we've seen this done before, haven't we? Martin Pike winners come out and win this race. So I thought he were a nice sort of value bet in this race. And he's the selection here. Um, high class hero. He could bounce back on better ground here. He were disappointing in the Albert Bartlett. Uh, Lecky Watson. Yeah, he could be thereabouts. Emmett Mullins has got a dark one here, hasn't he? He does this sometimes. Back me or sack me. You, you couldn't put a line through him, could you? I say This meeting, you will get the odd sort of strange result. We know that. But yeah. I like better days ahead. And uh, he's, he's the bet I've had there. can still sort of get five to one-ish that, that'd be good value I'd say right then yeah champion bumper right what's in this then Harbour Highway we gave him a quick mention didn't we um, up with Paul Burns also and it has gone to JP I thought he may be in the winners of one we'll see when it refreshes Now he goes here in the champion, it does. So I'll buy highways an interesting horse. I did have an anti post bet in this race as well. In fact I had two. Okay. And a small bit on redemption day who oh yeah, he is it. He is it. And the other one of 
course, William Money, you know. We had to back William Money in this, didn't we? Got a fair bit better anti post for this horse, but he's there at 11 to 4, I think, around that price. Yeah. I'm not quite sure about the champion bumper. You have to respect the winner there, Jasmine DeVoe. He's going to be sort of five to four, even money. But William Money, he's got that turn of foot, and he, I think he'll be well suited to this uh, sort of quick track, decent ground. He's not a big horse, and yeah, I think he's a bit of value against the favourite there. Romeo Coolio, he's probably the best long-term prospect in this race and he could you know he could turn the form around with a winner but I think he's going to be more next year's horse or even when he goes chasing really he's going to make a lovely chaser redemption day I thought could be the fly in the ointment though because to me last time you know, he's, he's 10 to 1 we were yeah last time out they put the hood on him for the first time settled him out the back on ground he should have hated and he came through in the blinker eye didn't he were really impressive this is the same race a few years back didn't he he pushed Fasal Vega all the way there and I think both those horses had a really hard race that day and it may have affected them you know yeah and uh but you know he's got plenty of speed and for the first time this year you know two mile quick sort of track decent ground they've got this hood on him seems to have made a big difference so yeah my main bet's William Money, and I'd have a little bit each way on Redemption Day if you're getting double figures there. I'd love William Money to take this, though. We, we had a small little bet, didn't we? I mean, for the Supreme, so it'd be nice to see him do this. Right, the next race, what have we got? Punchestown Gold Cup. Oh, it's just a bit sad now, isn't it? This we are Shishkin there. You know, I, I gave a chance to in this. I thought, you know, going right under. If you think back to that King George one, but that's a shame. It is. But there you go. Uh, right. I had a small little bet. Only a small bit of change on Journey with Me here. If you remember last time, I got 16s. I wouldn't be surprised if you can beat 16s, though. You know. It's a sort of... You might get sort of 20 to 1 plus on, on, on the exchanges on the day. Um, so I only had a little tiny bit on him. So I think I thought 16s were tight enough, to be honest. I may have a little bit more on him. Um, yeah, last time he's always been an horse I've sort of followed a bit. Um, you know, fell out with him a good while back. But he did me a good favour the last day. Uh, Tongue tied for the first time, weren't he? You know, he, you know, you go back. He's got Grade One for me. Came down at the last in the Ballymore, didn't he? When he'd have probably been third. But yeah he's always to me like when the going got tough sort of bailed out but last time they put this tongue tying in for the first time and when the going got tough last time he pulled it out and he really stayed on well to the line they're trying him back up at three mile now and you'd say you know watching him the last day yeah he could improve for that now that he's got this bit of toughness to him which he were lacking before clearly it's you know they couldn't have picked a harder race to run him in here we've got galloping haven't we um fast or slow so he's not even just got one horse you know you're taking one horse on and you think yeah they could underperform but 
or they both going to underperform and he'll need them to underperform to win this but we've seen shocks in this before I won fast or slow last year uh, you know monster prices can lightning strike twice can we do it two years in a row I don't know like I say he's got the two here uh, galloping I'd love to see him do it why wouldn't you you'd love to see you know I'll be happy to see galloping win this fast or slow He's got to have a massive chance here. There's a suspicion he's slightly better going right-handed. You know. What are the prices? We haven't got prices, have we yet? I mean, on here, on the Racing Post thing, they're showing like 8 to 11 galloping, 100 to 30 fast or slow. To me, that's a no-brainer. You'd have to be on fast or slow out of those two. You know, you just would. Um... Capadano will be well suited to this. He won the novice chase here a few years back, didn't he? A couple of years back, and he were really impressive. Three mile decent ground, that's his back. He could outrun his odds here. So I'd say Capadano will outrun his odds. I think Journey with me will. And yeah, we've got galloping and fast or slow at the top there, aren't we? I, I wouldn't be, as much as I love galloping, I'd say I couldn't be backing him at odds on here. I couldn't. But if he wins it, yeah, fair play. And, and I'll be happy to see him win it. Yeah. But, yeah, for what it's worth, I've just had a small bit on journey with me there. Right then. Six o'clock race, what have we got? So an half mile handicap chase. James de Burley fell out with him. He was a bit like Bialystock, should have won last time. I just don't see how he's ever going to win a race. Um, adamantly chosen. Had a little bit on him for the national. Yeah, he'll love the ground. I, I, I not let's go champ he was a original Kim your fancy weren't he he's here um, yeah, I thought he were done for the season I don't know I, I, I wouldn't like to put you away with that race I've not looked at it in any depth yet I'd certainly be against James de Burley um, adamantly chosen I love the ground Let's go, champs. Interesting. That's my thoughts on that race. And then the last race will be another bumper there, won't it? Oh no, Mayor's. Yeah, Mayor's bumper. Aurora Vega. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll move on. We'll move on. Right, so. Try and get Thursday loaded up. And now we haven't got final decks, have we? So we'll try and skip through these ones a bit quicker. Oh, here's some light. We're always, always moaning it. Every time we're in here, it always rains. If it doesn't rain, I'm just blinded. It's one or other, isn't it? Thursday, right. Right, I'll tell you what, we'll skip through most of the handicaps now from now on because we've, we've been going 40 odd minutes, haven't we? I'm not going to look at 79 runners in a two mile handicap. Um, Two mile handicap chase, listed race. We'll, we'll skip through that. Latouche Cup, Barbie Town Castle Novice Chase, Gaelic Warrior in it. Yeah. yeah, I think he's one to three. Going right handed. He'd probably prefer a bit of cut in the ground, but be a brave man to take him on going right handed. 
stay as a doll. Yeah, this. I'd love to see Irish Point here, but I suspect we won't. If Irish Point ran in this, I'd be backing him. But I suspect we won't. I think they're going to just run Teapot here. And if the ground's like good, you know, you'd like to take him on. But I was looking through the entries and you're struggling really to find us to take him on with. Um, possibly a steering for Lons each way, maybe. Uh, what else have we got? A three mile handicap listed race. You see, it's too many runners in these, really. Mare's Novice Hurdle listed race. 20 runners in that go on we'll, we'll have a look at that mm. spindlebury yeah she ran a blinder didn't she last time behind uh yeah behind jade groovesy spindlebury goes there she you know dropping a little bit in trip as well yeah She'd look a fair bet there, Spindlebury, if she turns up in that, I expect she'll be favourite, but deservedly so. Right then, so we're going to Friday. Three races, is that all we've got? Oh no. Okay, all I can see for Friday is three races. Right, we've got the two mile five novice handicap chase. This is the race, you know, I think Mr. Policeman's going to be targeted at this and he's the one I want to be with there. I've already looked through that race, yeah. Uh, there were one of Henry's there, sort of travelled well for a long way in the plate last time, but... Uh, Nah, I won't fall for him. It'll go Mr. Policeman in that. He'll give the weight away. Yeah, he'd be like my handicap nap of the week. So, you know, I've been looking forward to him. The Champion Hurdle Grade 1. I looked at this. I think there's only going to be three in this. I do. Um, we could have Stateman, aren't we? I think Irish Point and Colonel Mustard. I think... I think maybe just those three horses. I wondered about having each way on Irish Point at sort of four or five to one because basically you've got a free bet there. He's just got to beat Colonel Mustard. You know, I wouldn't put you off if you fancied to play it like that. But yeah, I didn't do it. And um, you know, State Man should be taking that, shouldn't he? Um, grade one, two mile, th two and a half mile grade one. That's Ballyburn, isn't it? There's some intriguing entries there. Jay to Groovy, brighter days ahead. I'd love to see them, but it's all it's all about Ballyburn, isn't it? There. And as Ballyburn's in that, I expect he'll probably go chasing next year. You know. He won't be 100% on that, but I think he's going to go chasing next year, which is fine. We did have a little bit on him for the champion hurdle, but we've also got Lozzie Mouth, haven't we, for the champion hurdle. So. I'd love Lozzie Mouth to go champion hurdle and Jay DeGruzzi to go mares. That would be nice. A little double on those. And Jay DeGruzzi with 20s, like, you know. Anyway, on to Saturday, and yeah, speaking of Lozzie Mouth, I think this is where we'll find Lozzie Mouth, the Mayor's Champion Hurdle. You know, all about Lozzie Mouth, that race. I did have a look. What we were saying earlier, we, Willie, as to oppose Henry at this meeting. We were all over Tell Me Something Girl, weren't we, at Cheltenham, and we had a nice bet on her without the favourite. I think here... That could be flipped round. And I expect Ashro Diamond 
well, she's in foul. I expect she'll leave that running behind at Charlton. She was far too keen there. Will Patrick be on her? Don't know. Probably he will, won't he? Patrick will be on her. Um, brighter days ahead than today as well. If brighter days ahead runs in this, I think she'll take care of the rest. There should be a second to Lozzy Mouth. Presuming brighter days ahead doesn't line up. Can we trust Patrick to get Ashram home in second here behind Lozzy Mouth? I think possibly we can, possibly. It might be just worth looking at as an angle into the race anyway. Ashro, we are Lozzy Mouth. She was really impressive, weren't she? At Fairy House last year. I think she'll love the ground. Yeah. Then, four year old hurdle. Yeah, I haven't really looked into this race. Don't know what's running. Bottle the Secret won well last time, but he's up in grade here, isn't he, against the sort of big boys of the division? I'm not sure. No comment on that race. And then just the last one there. What have we got? Two mile three. Handicap. Listed handicap hurdle. Oh, yeah. This is where. K. De Bourbon is entered here. Yeah, it's always a cracking handicap, this, and Waterford Whispers. This was the race I kind of had marked down for Waterford Whispers here. If Henry can get him in the same form, if he can get him here in good form, let him win for Cheltenham. Yeah. He'd be the one for me, although if K. De Bourbon runs here, might be just worth backing the two and doing the forecast. I'd, I'd like, I say, I like the Martin Pipe form, but I did have Waterford Whispers in mind for this race. Um, I think he's he's off one one three five, is he? One three five, yeah, yeah. I think you know the pace he showed last time as well surprised me. He should be well suited to this. He should take the beating here. Yeah, if he's in the same form he win at Charlton, I think he'll take the beating in that. And that's that then. So, you know, kept it under an hour just. Um, yeah, apologise for that if that were, you know, a little bit more unprofessional than normal even that today. But, you know, I wanted to give my thoughts on all, all what I could there. Um, yeah, and that's that then. So I will see you one more time after today. Uh, I'll be back more than likely next week. If not, don't worry, it'll be the week after. But I think I'll try and get it done next week and we'll just have like an end of season review and wrap it all up. Okay. So best of luck this week for Punchestown. I hope there was something in there maybe to help you and yeah best of luck for the week i hope you're back plenty of winners and i'll see you again soon thanks for your time